my friends think that I'm completely obsessed with toilets. This is a thing. But they do. I was drinking in a bar with some mates and one of them came back from the bathroom and just as he was sitting down, he leant over the table to me and he went, unisex toilets here, Sarah, as if unisex toilets are my favourite band. <laughs> I was like, why are you telling me that? He was like, I thought you liked unisex toilets. I was like, I don't like toilets. <laughs> I'm not a toilet head. You know, I'm not a bit fan of toilets. I don't queue up for the next toilet. <laughs> The reason I have to care about toilets is because people care about me in toilets. People are scared of me in toilets. Do you think I like unisex toilets? They are arguably the worst of the toilets because they are always gross because everybody gets to use them. Do you think I'd go into a bathroom, sit down on the seat and go, do you know what the nice thing about this is the wide variety of ass that has touched this before me. <laughs> People don't like it when I say I don't like unisex toilets. They get upset about it because the argument for liking them is like, oh, they're just the same as your toilets at home. They're not the same because you can do what you want in a public toilet and nobody knows it's you. <laughs> That's the truth, isn't it? You wouldn't react the same way. You wouldn't go to your nan's house and find graffiti on the wall and piss all over the floor and look at it and go, oh, that's fine. I'll just hover. <laughs> you wouldn't do that at all, would you? If someone drilled a hole in your bathroom wall. <laughs> and stuck their dick through it. <laughs> you wouldn't even think about sucking it, would you? <laughs> Not for a second. You'd call the police. <laughs> the weirdest things in my life have happened to me in unisex toilets. I was once in a unisex toilet washing my hands. A man came in, panicked at the sight of me, and he stopped like that, like I was a bear. <laughs> and he went, oh, are these for everyone? <laughs> And I went, yeah, I think they might be. And he went, oh, all right. And then he walked off to go to the cubicle and then obviously just changed his mind, decided he had to say something because he popped his head back around it and he went, all right then, but just so you know, I mean you no harm. <laughs> I was like, mate, you did not have to say that. You've made it fucking weird now. I didn't know what to say back to him. I said, thank you. So essentially what's happened is a man's gone, do you know what, I'm not gonna hurt you tonight. And I've gone, sir, you are too kind. Now we're older, all my 90s kid friends, all they do is they complain about sleep. That's all they ever do to me, they just complain about sleep. They go, it's so hard to get to sleep, man. How come whenever I'm trying to get to sleep, that's when my worries and my fears start creeping into my brain, right when I'm trying to doze off. Why that moment? I'll tell you why that moment. Because that is the only moment of the day that you are not staring at your phone. It is, it's the only appointment left in your brain for it to do its one function, which is think things, because you spend all day denying it that opportunity, because you're too busy taking a quiz trying to find out which Dead EastEnders character you are based on your eating habits. <laughs> or looking up what Disney princesses might look like as croquet potatoes. <laughs> so there's no time left for your brain to think those things. That's why as you're suddenly drifting off, your brain kicks into gear like, holy shit, we've got 20 minutes and no distractions. Go, 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 go. Remind this guy that he does not have a pension plan in place and his dad's gonna have to die a lot younger than he wants him to. Go, go, go. Make it do that mole he was born with is brand new all of a sudden. Go, go, go. Remind this guy the time he went into a hairdresser's and they asked what he wanted. He said, one haircut, please. Go, go, go. <laughs> it's a true story, it was this one. It's what happens if you're vague. <laughs> By the way, my point with that isn't put down the phone it's stop complaining, okay? I'm not one of those pricks. I'm not one of those YouTube spoken word artists who think they're being f***ing noble. Oh, we've got to reconnect to society, man. We're looking at screens for too long. We've got to get back to face-to-face -to -face interaction, back to the old... I'm not one of those dickheads who think they're deep because they're stood near water or they put a deep track underneath it and got a smoke machine. <laughs> Same shit every time from those guys. It's always, did you know the average person spends four years of their life looking down at their phone? Source, Wikipedia. <laughs> But all of this social media is just making us needier. So many face swaps on Facebook. We FaceTime, but do we face time? Mm. <laughs> They're hacking the cloud on our computer, but not the cloud in the sky. We spend so much time asking who that we forget to ask how. <laughs> and why, sorry, why? Jesus, it was right there. It's all this text speak with your head deep in your bent screen that I damn read and I beg please. Let's go back in time to when words were prolific or even further back to when they used hieroglyphics. Emojis aren't honest, they're a damn in disgrace. I know you're not a monkey with his hands on his face. Yeah. <laughs> we measure self-worth now by a number. How many followers we've got, how many friends we've accepted instead of how we used to, how much money we earn and how many people we'd slept with. <laughs> so put down the phone and take out the battery. Then maybe all of us can return 
to humanity. Manatee, manatee, manatee. <laughs> I've been thinking a lot about my parents recently because they retired this year and they're selling our house. So I went home on this trip to clear out my childhood bedroom and to go to my dad's retirement party. And just to paint you a picture of my parents, my mom is five foot four and slender and my dad is six foot four and a big guy. And even though my dad's the bigger one, my mom is by far the scarier one of the two because she is super tough. She doesn't take shit from anybody, but she's smart, she's cunning. She knows how to get what she wants, and my dad calls that feminine guile. And he says I lack that. <laughs> my dad once used the term bitch as a descriptor for me. <laughs> it wasn't even in a mean way. He was just trying to jog someone's memory. He was like, my daughter, you know, short, brunette, a bitch. <laughs> and the guy was like, Janine, yeah, <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> but my dad is right, because I can be very confrontational. While I was home on this trip, I, I took a dress to the dry cleaner because it had a stain on it. And when I went to collect it, not only had he not removed the stain, he'd shrunk in the dress, somehow making the stain bigger. <laughs> and we had this huge argument. I refused to pay. I stormed out of there. I said, you don't know how to do your job, buddy. The fight must have been so bad, because when I got home, I saw that the dry cleaner left me a voicemail. And on it, he said that if he ever saw me again, he would end my life. <laughs> And I thought, I'm gonna get murdered by a dry cleaner. <laughs> and then I thought, well, if he did kill me, at least he'd be convicted. He's got no idea how to clean up the evidence. <laughs> but my mom isn't like that. She's not confrontational in that way. My mom knows how to get what she wants with feminine guile. Like, my dad definitely wears the pants in the family, but only the ones my mom leaves out for him. <laughs> For example, my whole life growing up, my dad insisted that all the walls in our house be kept white. He wanted the house bright and open and airy. And after 25 years, my mom was sick of white walls, so she just waited till my dad took a nap one day and then just painted one wall yellow. <laughs> and when my dad woke up, he was furious. And my mom said, it's just an accent wall, Joe. It's a pop of color. Let's leave it for a little while and see if we like it. But that week, my mom invited the neighborhood to dinner, and anytime the bell rang, she'd be like, don't worry, Joe, I'll get the door. Sit down, relax. Compliment the wall. <laughs> and all week, people kept going, wow, the wall looks amazing. That wall looks gorgeous. And finally, my dad just started saying, eh, it's called an accent wall. <laughs> it's just a pop of color. <laughs> and from that day on, my mom has painted every wall in our entire house. So I've been thinking a lot about my parents because while I was home on this trip, I made a pact with myself. I said, I'm not gonna fight with my mom and dad. Because even though I love my parents, we are very, very different people. First off, I'm not particularly religious and my parents are super Catholic. I mean, they are so Catholic, their actual names are Mary and Joseph. <laughs> That's the level. And the big religious argument that we keep having recently is about my boyfriend, Andrew, because we live together, but we're not married. And when my mom heard that, she said, I don't like the idea of you and Andrew having sex outside of marriage. And I just had to explain to her, mom, we're in a committed long-term relationship. We're not having sex anymore. <laughs> Because it's tough, it's tough when you're in a long-term relationship to keep that spark alive, you know? In the beginning, it's easy. In the beginning, we couldn't keep our hands off each other. One time, Andrew was like, let's go. And I was like, oh no, I'm, I'm actually on my period. You'd probably just think it was gross. And he looked at me and said, Janine, I love you. I'd have sex with you if you had blood coming out of your ears. And I just thought, you are no longer my emergency contact. <laughs> no. No, no, because I don't need Andrew turning up to the scene of an accident. And they're like, we're so sorry, sir. There's nothing we could do. And he's like, I can think of something. Thank you for watching Solar Theatre on YouTube. Subscribe now for more best comedy.